We're in LA! <laughs> <laughs> so we have final casting auditions for Broadway Dreams tomorrow, which is really exciting, but it can also be really nerve-wracking if you don't know what you're doing, so we decided to make a video talking about like preparation for your audition. It's especially when it comes to at least our experience with Broadway Dreams auditions and how we um, prepare and and how we've been taught to prepare uh, through Broadway Dreams and how that can flow out to other auditions that you may do. So you may have a different experience, but this is what, uh, what we've experienced so far. So first let's uh, touch on the headshots. Okay, so with the headshots, it's always good to have your name in the lower left hand corner. Um, we have our headshots on eight by 10. If you don't have your name like this, like how you, it's like typed out like that, um, you can also write it on the bottom, but it's always good to have your name and your face on the same page so that they don't have to keep flipping back and forth. On the back, I have stapled my resume um, and it doesn't have like any extra like edges or anything so the paper itself is going to be longer than your headshot because your headshot is an 8x10 this is what? 8.5x11 8.5x11 yeah fit. so you cut it to fit um, and then you're ready to go also print out two of them one for your final casting audition and then you know one for whatever email else whatever else you may need. For workshops or for other auditions, it's always good to have a backup. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this case, our headshots that we printed out this time happen to be um, glossy. Uh, in the past, we've always tended to like matte. Um, that's kind of a personal preference, though. And different uh, directors will, will have different opinions on that. And then in terms of the placement of the picture, I mean, you're going to have uh, photographers that are going to be great at what they do. and. Um, but if, you, if, for example, if you're on a budget or you need to do a quick headshot that um, is new and updated for you, um, it's always good to, to, you know, not do full body shots. It's a headshot, so we're looking at, you know, torso up, mm -hmm. you know, half torso up. Face straight on. Face straight on. None of the... Calling me out from last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a tattoo, so in my headshot this year, I included my tattoo because it's big and uh, on stage, on screen, wherever you are, as an actor, if you have a large tattoo, then that's something that a, a, a director can see um, right away and just know that that's part of you and that's a part of your package and that if you know, you're gonna be cast, that's something that has to be dealt with. Yeah, <laughs> being, a ta being a tattoo, having a tattoo, um, having a tattoo isn't like gonna, um, end your career or anything like that as an actor but you just want to make sure that it's something you communicate with casting directors that you have them because they you can cover them up and stuff like that. So your outfit, um, your outfit should be appropriate for the song you're singing. Don't come dressed in character um, but I don't know unless unless you're making a specific choice to make it funny that you maybe you're singing uh, The Hills Are Alive with the sound, if you're singing the song The Sound of Music and you're gonna dress in a belly shirt. In a belly shirt, you know, <laughs> like that. Unless you're making that a specific choice, you know what I mean. Like, especially if you're auditioning for a specific part, you know, you wanna seem presentable as that part. Don't come dressed as Maria from The Sound of Music. Um, although, you know, that I'm sure that's worked for for some people. But at least in terms of, of this Broadway Dreams audition and final casting Broadway Dreams auditions in general, they aren't specifically casting certain parts because they're building the show around people. So just come with your song in mind, and or what you have in mind for your song. So even if it's not what the original show had in mind, but what your interpretation of the song is. Your, your outfit, you know, should obviously be professional audition attire. Um, you don't have to wear like a suit and a tie to an audition, that, like uh, not Broadway dreams. Um, specifically, you don't have to worry about anything like super crazy like that. Um, but you do want to like look nice, obviously, and um, dress, you know, respectfully. And but at the same time, show your personality and show like who you are as a person and as a performer. And I like to that. describe it as classy casual. Mm -hmm. Something you you want to be remembered, and the outfit should not shine you, but it should uh, play to your strengths. Girls a lot of the time wear dresses. Um, I personally don't always feel comfortable wearing a dress, 
So I'm usually the girl who will go in there with a nice pair of pants and like a solid colored t-shirt or just like a plain t-shirt. Don't have any logos usually. Like if you have a logo, it's probably gonna be distracting. It should be something that like flatters you, makes you look good, makes you comfortable. That's like the most important thing is that you're comfortable. It doesn't matter what everybody else around you is wearing. The guys can go with, you know, also like a um, nice solid t-shirt or um, like a button up shirt. Um, like with a design on it or without it. Girls, um, makeup. Directors usually like it when it's like natural looking. So don't try to wear a lot of makeup to, you know, look your prettiest and, you know, do a lot of contouring because they want to see you as you are. I've heard not to wear character heels in an audition. However, I've seen a lot of people wear character heels in auditions. So I don't really think that that matters as much. Um, if you do have something that's not a character heel, I mean, go for it. Again, make it look good with your outfit. Um, if you're gonna wear heels, don't wear something that's like too high and uncomfortable. Walking into the audition is also really important. So if you're walking awkward because you can't walk in your heels the best way, but they look good with your outfit, it's probably, you know, you wanna pick something else. Um, nice pair of, you know, flats, that's always a go-to. A song is obviously a huge part of your audition because <laughs> you're singing it and, um, <laughs> When you're picking your song, a lot of time different auditions will have different requirements. You know, they want you to sing a song from a show or they want you to sing uh, contrasting pieces. You know, that's always gonna depend on your audition. When you're going into a Broadway Dreams audition, there's a lot more accountability on you when you're getting to pick what you wanna sing. Um, something that, that you can sing that's, that you can sing well, that's in your range. Um, uh, something that you relate to is important. Um, or if you don't, relate to a song immediately from what the song is, you morph the song into something that you can relate to. Uh, that's something that Broadway Dreams likes a lot. So you can't change the genre of music, but you can change the feeling of it. Um, but just make sure that, that you relate to the song um, on a personal level, if, whether that's personal experience or whatever, and that uh, it's in your range that you can sing it. Make sure that your song is well, well rehearsed. Um, you should know your whole song. Um, first and foremost, you, you have to prepare a 16 to 32 measure cut of your song. And um, so that's, you know, what you're expected to sing. But you should know your whole song because if, if a director wants to take a different direction with it, they may ask you to sing the whole thing or they may want to know like how far you can take that song or um, they may not even like that song. Um, but know, know your whole song entirely and always have a plan B song because a director, or a, a casting agent, whatever, may hear your song and say, I don't think that song is for you. Um, I didn't like that song. I want you to sing a different one. Um, if, I mean, if you're first you know, coming into this, it can be scary. Uh, if you've heard something called a repertoire book, that's like a huge thing and the, these issues that come about are easily solved if you have something like that, a repertoire book, a whole selection of different pieces that you can pull out of your hat at any moment. You know, it's great to have all these different contrasting songs and one of them you, you pull out and you have, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about markings, but you have a 16 bar cut of the song and you have another 32 bar cut of the song. Mm -hmm. So you know the whole song. For my repertoire book in my song. This is how I marked it. So like we said, um, have the full song. So I have the full song even though I started quite far into it. So I have it marked here in brackets, um, clearly highlighted and lined out. And then it says start right there so that they know that you're starting. So you start here and then if there are any key changes, be sure to highlight that, mark that there. That's important for your accompanist to know. Right here, I had a cut, so I cut this part of my song. So I didn't sing this whole part right here, and then I cut straight back to here. This is where it begins. You have the little line, line, circle, and then that. So then you go here. You can cross it out. I would cross it out with a pencil just in case you want to sing that song again later. You don't want to scribble the whole thing out. And then finish here with your end. That can be really overwhelming at first, but it's it's something that you can develop over time. You don't have to feel like you 
if this is like your first intensive, you don't feel like you need to have that down. It's a learning experience. That's what these intensives are for. For so. Broadway Dreams specifically, have a pop song. If you have a, like a, a song that isn't already like meant for the piano, like a pop song, you want to find a, a piano track on YouTube. Or with an accompanist. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the audition is with a live uh, accompanist. 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 It's so with a live accompanist. So if you've never done that before, first of all, that's really scary. Um, and it's, you know, hard to like get used to that um, because it's not like a set. It's not like when you're rehearsing a song, you know it's going to be, you know, this tempo and it's going to sound this exact way. So that's um, intimidating and scary. But that's why, you know, you should definitely practice with a piano track. You should practice it acapella you should practice your song in like every way that you possibly can as a monologue yeah literally practice it in every single way so that you're like for sure prepared for that it also knowing what every single word means it just it sucks when you're like going to sing a song and you're not like relating with the accompaniment the <laughs> accompanist it's not like working out because you're not sure of the tempo or you haven't communicated with them so so when you walk into the room, right, um, you know, present yourself, be yourself. Don't feel like you need to put up this front. They want to see you and see what it's going to be like working with you. Go to the pianist. It's the first thing you want to do. I mean, if they if they say hello, say hello back. But go to the pianist. Show them the songs you're singing. Show them the markings. Um, you know, clearly show them where this is, where it ends, this is where key changes, it, key changes, um, tempo. Don't snap at your accompanist. Mm -mm. Snapping, patting your leg, like even doing this can really irritate them. They just want you to sing it to them. Like sing like a little bit, like. Mm -hmm. Hum it, sing it. It's gonna mm -hmm. be a lot better than conducting them or tapping them. Uh, I mean, they're professional musicians. They know what tempos are. So right, just... and be aware of your nerves as well when you're telling them your tempo because there's a good chance that you're gonna walk in there your heart's racing and you're gonna go up to your accompanist and be like like it's so fast and then they start playing it for you and then you're singing your song too fast and then the you know they'll make a comment on it yeah. <laughs> experience relax and breathe <laughs> up to them you'll be like hi my name is Becky you know if you've never been there of course um, hi my name is Becky Tank I'll be singing this song from this show um, also know your composer, that's a good thing as well because there's a good chance at the end of the song they'll be like, who wrote that? You know, and so always be educated on, on your, song. your song. So be yourself to them, don't be a robot. But uh, when it comes to where you look in the audition, oh, yeah. is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, because some cast directors, some staff members want you to look at them and sing to their soul and some don't want you to, they're not there, right? You're on stage, you're playing to a, a you're, you're playing to your points. Um, personally, maybe you guys can tell why, what you like to do personally. I, uh, if I glance at, at the people on the, on the table, you know, that happens. I don't specifically sing to them, if that makes sense. You know, I'm singing to my points. I have my points of focus. And when there's changes of mood and the shift of the, it's a whole other, video but when, but when there's changes of mood and shifts in the song and I change my focus points sometimes those focus points cross with the people watching um, you audition and that's okay you don't have to avoid them be careful though that you're not looking like up here when you're singing because that looks weird and then they can't see your facial expression so it's just like a couple inches above their head is like what I'm comfortable with um, Part of the reason, actually the majority of the reason why I do it is because it makes me nervous to sit there and stare at them and be watching for their reactions. Like it makes them as nervous as it makes you, basically. So, I wouldn't look at them, but I mean, Alex Newell said completely different. Maybe. Alex Newell said that you stare right at the person and you perform for them. It really is preference and Alex Newell is very successful, so. Well, and that. There's no wrong or right. Alex is telling them the story, you know, like, so there's no confusion as to, I'm uncomfortable, I'm looking at you, what do you think of my song? Because Alex has the confidence to just, you know, right. stare straight. So if you have that confidence, if you're ready for that, go for it. So at Broadway Dreams, like, uh, specifically, it's like a week-long intensive, um, and so you're gonna be there, 
every day so you need to bring a bag to the intensive um, if you don't you're gonna be suffering because you should bring a lot of stuff first of all um, something you have to have your repertoire every day you go to Broadway dreams you have to have it, it has all your songs in it, it has your headshots and your resumes um, when you're at Broadway dreams you you rehearse and you also take classes you need your book for your classes um, you also need a notebook and obviously writing utensils make sure that you have a highlighter because that's going to be important um, and a pencil because at Broadway dreams especially things change every couple hours even so you know always have a pencil so that you can erase you know bring a pen for you know finalized things or whatever but um, a pencil is very important Bring extra pencils for your friends. You want to bring some water because you're going to be singing and dancing and you're going to be there all day. So you got to stay hydrated because uh, I guarantee you'll be exhausted at the end of every single day. Oh, like jazz pants, uh, tank top, dance shoes. Um, sports bra, sports ponytail. Bra, uh, maybe dance belts for guys, um, especially for the performance if you're wearing like tights and stuff. Yeah, there's a, a final casting dance audition as well, so be prepared. Be prepared for that. Um, stretch yourself because they usually don't have time because it's at like the end of the day when they're doing the dance audition. Um, be prepared for something difficult. Be prepared for something fun. What you, what you need in your bag <laughs> is lunch because uh, they have like a designated lunch time guarantee you're gonna be like starving halfway through the day because like we mentioned like you're there all day and i know like some of the days lunch was my favorite part of the day because i was like so hungry and tired and i was just like was getting hangry so pack like a good lunch like healthy food don't probably like don't pack soda water is good too like you don't need a soda yeah water is good that's what you need you water. have to stay hydrated mm -hmm. I mean, say it. Thanks for watching our video. I hope that it was helpful for you and that you're excited for your final casting audition. If you have any questions, reach out to any of the interns. Follow my Broadway dreams on Instagram and um, like go to the website. We'll link all that stuff in the bio so that you have access to it. Um, and then you can have even more information on Broadway dreams. Please subscribe. We put out new videos every sometimes. sometimes.